Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. Day two of the Method Mayhem Battleground Invitational is here. My name is Kexman. Eddie is already high fiving you. It's 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 the Sunday. It's the second day. It's we've got the grand finals coming up, but we have got a bunch of games to get to before we get there. However, I am not doing this alone. I am also joined by the incredible Gelu. Gelu, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, very awake, very alert for these some good games. First series should be really good. German Academy versus Speedrun. Both teams kind of dominated their last series, so I can't really tell how this one's going to go. Yeah, it's going to be super, super exciting. And, and speaking of super exciting, we've got the super exciting Eddie here with us as well. Eddie, how are you feeling about today? It's a grand final day, always slightly different. It always has a little bit of a little bit of a, of a more exciting air to it. Uh, do you feel as though we're going to get that today? Yeah, definitely. I also brought out the the good old, uh, not the suit, but at least the blazer for, for this occasion. It is the finals day after all, and uh, as per tradition, we, we have to do it uh, like last time. I'm very excited for the today's uh, first matchup, German Academy versus German uh, versus Speedrun. It is probably the, the closest matchup of, of the last teams we have. They are really, really equal. So yeah, I, I expect a 2-1 for either team. Oh, you're expecting our first game three. Now, obviously, Eddie mentioned in there, these are best of threes. Uh, however, the grand final will be a best of five when we get there. But for the time being, this is a best of three. It is double elimination, so there is a lower bracket as well. Uh, they are rosters of 13 players with 10 players in each team. Here we go. We can obviously see the brackets here. We can see Big Burst of Vic and Ghosting Farm are currently down in the lower bracket. Known Unknown also down there. They will be facing off in the lower bracket against the loser of this match between German Academy and Speedrun. E-Heroes yesterday, making sure they are heading towards the grand final. They're currently in the semifinals in the upper bracket. There are some absolutely incredible games to get to today. Um, but as mentioned, all the rosters, uh, they do have 13 players. There are 10 players in each team. They can switch out in between the games if they wish. Teams can have a maximum of three tanks and three healers on each of their teams. And teams can only have one Guardian Druid per team as well. You can also find all of the rules if you want to. Obviously, there are various different toys that are banned, various different things that we pretty much know are banned across the board. So, um, you know, it's, it's fairly understandable that there are there are certain things that just, you know, if they're not basically allowed in Rate of Battlegrounds, they are not allowed here. Um, now, taking a look at what we have coming up today, uh, there's, 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 there's some great teams. We saw some great action yesterday. Unfortunately, we did lose Shame and German Heroes, but... You know, the teams that we have left here, Gallo, are, you know, probably some of the best in the world at the moment. Yeah, for sure. I've got E Heroes in the upper bracket brackets waiting for German Academy or Speedrun to come in as well. We had a uh, big burst of it just there in our last game. That was I thought that game was gonna be closer than it was, but it it seems like a few mistakes on the sides of uh Big Burst of it not anti capping that base. I spoke to uh, one of their players after the game and they were not very happy with that. <laughs> so uh, there's a few things being pointed, but hopefully they've sorted it out for today. Yeah, fingers fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I mean, obviously, you know, Eddie, teams will be seeing exactly what, you know, how other teams are playing. They will have taken a look at, you know, what E-Heroes were doing, what Big Burst of it are doing, what Ghost Farm were doing. Today, they kind of, you know, we've seen all the teams in action now. So do you think we'll see a couple of changes to tactics based upon who they're going to be facing off against? Probably. I mean, I expect the uh, German Academy to play the, the least normal, to say. They have their core of uh, 10 players they like to use for each game. They have a few players who can swap to a different class, but usually we see the standard. We see their, their Holy Paladin, their double disc combo, or at least every dance and Rogue as well. So I don't expect many changes for them. They are quite comfortable with what they are playing. So, But, but for Speedrun, they are a team that has a, a, a bigger variety of players. They have a 30-man lineup as well, so they can pull in other classes. We have seen, for example, they have Ula Inyo on the bench waiting for some of the flag maps, I assume. And uh, yeah, so so that team, I think they can adapt. But uh, for German Academy, I think uh, I expect some, some standard uh, ladder gameplay. Yeah, fingers crossed we get to see some really exciting gameplay between these teams. And uh, I also want to see exactly who you think is going to take this next best of three series. Is it German Academy? One in chat. Is it going to be speedrun? Two in chat. But before we get to the wheel spin to decide who is going to be, uh, to decide what map they're going to be playing on, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Um, obviously, Champion. 
They have been absolutely incredible in making sure that you are looking good when you are representing Method out on the streets. These hoodies, these t-shirts, they're incredible. The, the blankets are, they're, they're absolutely mind-blowing. They're absolutely mind-blowing. Make sure you grab one of those as well. Uh, also, the crowdfunding for the tournament as well. We also have, uh, you know, the ability for you to donate, exclamation point crowdfunding, exclamation point donate in the chat. Uh, it basically gives you all the information that you need to do. You do need to log in so you can help support all of these players during this tournament. And also, every subscription to the Method channel, whilst this event is live, it will contribute $2.50 to the prize pool, get access to an ad-free viewing experience, unlock sub emotes, and generate channel points at an increased rate, which you can redeem to interact with things live on stream, all while supporting your favorite teams. And speaking of supporting our favorite teams, Dawn as well. Um, you can find them on Twitter at Dawn Europe. They have put together 10 million gold that is going to be added to the cash prize pool as well. So not only will the players be earning gold in real life, they're also going to be getting gold in WoW to help support them in their rated battlegrounds. And finally, speaking of rated battlegrounds, check out DBM. Not only do they give you fantastic support during your dungeons, not only do they give you fantastic support during your raids, but they also give you incredible support during your PvP battlegrounds. Prediction timers in battlegrounds, spell alerts, any information that you need to know, it's going to give you access to it. It covers all of your gaming needs, and make sure you check them out for 9.2. That is exclamation point DBM in the chat to learn a little bit more about what they do for pvp but as mentioned before we are going to spin our roulette wheel now the roulette wheel that we have here obviously decides the first map we do know this we've had you know we've had a couple of picks we've seen twin peaks a couple of times yesterday we saw eye of the storm for the first time eddie what are you expecting here what are you hoping for between these two teams Personally, I hope for an uh, objective map. We saw speedrun yesterday on AB playing really, really well against German heroes, really uh, dominating them, honestly, forecapping them. Uh, with Bilya still contested. So I think speedrun is quite comfortable with any map they get. I think German Academy would prefer an objective map. So I would like to see some AB or, uh, or Deep Wing Gorge. And how about yourself, Gallo? Any maps that you uh, particularly want to see here between these I two want it teams? To be Battle Gilneas, just because then people have to think afterwards what map they want to take <laughs> instead of defaulting to it every time. Good point. I think, we, I think we only had one map where it wasn't Battle for Gilneas yesterday. I think we only had one map choice that wasn't Battle for Gilneas, if I remember rightly. I don't know. My, my mind is just... I have my notes here. Hang on. For I think off. you're right, Kix. Yeah, I no, right. I have, yeah, I have my notes. No, actually, no, we had two. Um, Known oh. versus Big Burst of Ick, they went for Twin Peaks as their second map because their Temple of Kotmogu is the first one. And oh, Speedrun no. against German Heroes. Silver Shard Mines was chosen by German Heroes against Speedrun. Um, oh, yeah. In yeah, their second right. map. And they had a Rathi Basin first. So, yeah, we had two maps yesterday where Battle for Gineas wasn't the, uh, the second map choice. But let's spin this wheel and find out exactly where we are going to land. Chat, what do you want to see? Which map do you want to see here between German Academy and Speedrun? It looks as though we're going to get Silver Shard Mines. I was I was hoping it was going to slow down a little bit more then maybe get some Eye of the Storm. But Silver Shard Mines here, you were hoping for an objective-based map, Eddie. And safe to say, Silver Shard Mines is, is one of the more interesting ones. Yeah, a great map to start off on uh, for these both teams, actually. I think both teams like this map. It's a map they, they can play to their strength. And I'm quite wondering what do we ex what we will see in the opener. I think the opener will have a lot uh, to say for this um, for this game. Especially, do we see the triple or even quad ink on middle? Uh, we saw yesterday from German, uh, from German heroes. So I expect something similar. Um, I think they're going to go heavy on off cards. So yeah, I mean, it's up to the teams to decide what they will do, of course. And Gelly, we saw Silver Shard Mines with speedrun yesterday against German heroes. And... I think it's safe to say German heroes, they probably didn't play the map quite as well as they wanted to here. So uh, quite as well as they wanted to yesterday. So obviously speedrun, they did dominate that map. But the question is, are they going to do the same here against German Academy? We've seen what speedrun can do. Is it going to be the same story here? Uh, well, speedrun did very well yesterday on Silver Shard because their floaters weren't contested at all. So they just kept breaking off and just taking the cards whenever they wanted. And also German heroes kept trying to team fight them and losing and then losing off cards as well. 
So I think German Academy will play much better on the off cards. I'm not sure how strong their team fight is, but I'm assuming is going to be pretty good as well because they've got uh, a, yeah. they've got pretty good classes for it. Yeah, they do. yeah. Yeah, it's very, very true. And Silver Shard Mines, I think, is is quite a good map to start them off with. As mentioned, you know, it is an objective-based map, but there's 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 a little bit more to it. I think a lot of people see Silver Shard Mines as just protect the carts, but, you know, as you mentioned there, Galu, uh, you know, and Eddie alluded to as well, is the fact that, you know, there's, there's definitely various different ways that you can approach this map. You've got to look at timers, and I think it's safe to say, Eddie, that this is one map that people often think of as being relatively simple, and actually it's probably one of the more complicated maps. Yeah, it's very complicated, and I think it's due to the nature of the cards, right? You can swap two of the cards in different directions, which will increase their cap timer, which allows plays around middle as well. If you want to swap the first lava long, you can instantly push from middle, right, and then go top, and then actually rotate to the long lava afterwards. So I expect something like this, but the thing is, when we have such good teams, most of them are prepared for the lava swap, so you don't usually see it. However, if it happens, it, it, it will really change up the game because that means that mid will have such uh, much greater importance than, than Lava has. Yeah, and for those people that are watching that may not necessarily know a lot about Battlegrounds, they may not know a lot about Silver Shard Mines, Gallo, Eddie's there mentioning Lava and mid. What is the significance behind the Lava cart, as it were, uh, versus the rest of the carts that come out from the obviously the middle of the map? I mean, Lava caps first, so you want to fight for it, and then you can break off after you get it and cap the other two. Whereas if you just go for uh, top and mid, then, you know, Lava is going to keep capping, and you're just kind of behind on points. Exactly. Very, very important to gain control over that Lava cart, but not only to gain control over the Lava cart, you need to maintain control whilst also contesting the other carts, because... You know, again, it's something. It's relatively easy for you to just stay with one cart, but if you fall behind and if your floaters, you know, they're not being as effective as you want them to be in gaining access to those other carts, it's uh, it's going to spell game over relatively quickly. We, as 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 you also mentioned, Eddie, at the start, you know, you want to see a game three. We haven't seen a game three yet. It's been oh. effectively two 0 across the board yesterday. Day two, however, we do have the grand finals. That is a best of five, so we will. We're guaranteed to see a Game 3 there. We're guaranteed to see a Game 3 in the Grand Finals. But we want to see that Game 3 beforehand. And honestly, German Academy versus Speedrun, this is probably the one game that I would say has the most potential for going to a Game 3. Yeah, I think it has two. I think it has... Um, they are so close. And they, they couldn't honestly be closer. Maybe uh, German Academy... Have close can have close games against E Heroes as well, but I still see them as a slight favorite for this tournament. But yeah, the, these are the two teams, and 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 this will uh, be very important for which one of them is going to meet E Heroes as well, and and probably have an easier route to the finals, right? Because sure, if they meet E Heroes in the in the next semifinals, then they can not meet them in the lower bracket, of course, before they they meet again in the finals. So so I think it, both teams have a, a good route now, and uh, they just need to take this victory if they want to progress. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there is, you know, they, whoever wins this, yes, they're going up against the heroes who are a very difficult team, but you've got to imagine it's the quote unquote easier way into the grand final, obviously, to continue along in the winner's bracket. Uh, it was touched upon briefly, Gallo, the fact that all of the teams will have seen how the other teams have played. Obviously, they will know each other before this tournament. They will know exactly sort of how these players are, are working. And they'll have seen, you know, what they their tactics on Battlefield Gnaeus. They'd have seen their tactics on stuff like Twin Peaks, Arathi Basin. And, you know, th they're going to be looking and seeing who they want to hit. I imagine there's a team going, OK, we know how they play. We want to avoid them. We want to go and play against these folks. Just how important is the information they get from yesterday going into today? Uh, I think it's quite important because you can see how the team plays, as you said, if they're going for ninja caps or uh, they'll know to stop their floaters going off as fast as they can. But they, I mean, they know this anyway. It's not as they already have because they've been playing against each other for years and it's just how the map has been played. So I don't think individual play on this map it will uh, differentiate from game to game, but I, I mean, I, I don't. It's good to learn and watch from the vods, but I don't think they'll see anything unique to which either team did really. Yeah, very, very true, very true. And we have entered Silver Shard Mines. We do see uh, the fantastic setup of all these minecarts. And as Eddie alluded to, uh, when this was introduced, we hadn't seen anything like this in Battlegrounds, and it was a little bit, you know. It, 
you almost the first time you came in here, you kind of got lost and ended up getting ganked because you spent too much time staring at the carts and going, wow, they've actually made them move. That's really impressive. <laughs> and we can see, obviously, at the start here, a couple of the carts heading out. This is the usual start that we do see. And taking a look at the compositions here, we do see the triple boomkin. Sorry, not the triple, it's double boomkin and that feral druid once again from German Academy. We saw that yesterday, Eddie, and that feral druid, incredibly effective. Yeah, it was really effective, and I expect it to be effective on this map as well, especially on the off cards. However, speedrun, I love my dog opting also into the Feral Druid. He has also a very, very strong Feral. He's used to play Boomy as well. Grilan is a, you could say, Feral one trick. He doesn't really opt for the Boomy play. So I think they, they want to try and match the off card here. And, and these classes only tells me that it's going to be a 3v3. We're going to have Rogue Boomy Feral versus Rogue Boomy Feral off cards. And Maybe we're going to see Tyke uh, or Atisha, the second boomy, rotate in as well. So uh, definitely keep an eye on mid here in the opener. Yeah, an eye on mid and there's these off carts. It'll be all about the off carts, I think, this game. They, uh, they build their comp around it with this Feral Druid, you're completely correct. Do you have most... dance, Grilaran and track of it? Grilaran going up to top. Looks like Avadan's going to go tank mid, getting these residual points as soon as they can. Yeah. to make sure that when it goes in, they will get those uh, little seal at the top. They're ticking. They've got 10 points already, so these residuals can actually add up in a later game. Yeah. yeah. And as we see here, the, it is the opener on mid. I expect it here. The 3v3 coming out. Smokey is going to wait for Evidence to show, I assume. Yeah, and as soon as Evidence shows, Smokey is opening up on him. However, this is very, very tight. Both teams want to stay in the card. The Convo got stopped as well. All the burst is flying out. The war stomp here as well. But we see the off field. And, and if Horde managed to survive here, aka Speedrun, if they manage to survive, they will hold this card. And then it's who can move faster to mid or lava. And it's, yeah, this would be a safe card for speedrun. I'm not sure they're gonna drop this. And the reason why Revsi is running out here and dying outside of the card is if you die in the card, the points ticks faster for Alliance. So even if they're down... Oh! oh. And as I said that, oh. German heroes get it. They wow. just managed to switch that. That was so close there. And as they, as we say that, they're moving down, obviously, into Lava here. This is the car that ca the caps the quickest, as mentioned. So they want to make sure they're gaining control over this. German Academy do currently have that control, but Speedrun are doing everything they can to potentially change that. We do see Nauri going down on the side of German Academy. I don't believe it's going to be enough for it to switch. We're going to have to wait and see. I Love My Dog has also died. The, I, I Love My Dog, remember, was up fighting that cart that we saw currently, so may have been killed on the road rotation down and I do want to point out as well, yesterday we saw just how effective Avidance can be, just how dangerous he can be on that rogue. And the fact they've got Grill there on that Feral Druid being able to stealth around frees up Avidance a lot more. But customer support doing a good job in shutting that down, actually. It looks as though customer support has almost set themselves up as a, you know, the, the Avidance negator. Just making sure as soon as Avidance appears anywhere, anywhere customer support is on Avidance, shutting them down. Yeah, with three cards in and all of them have gone to German Academy so far. Looking like a dominating force in this game. As the game moves towards the middle car, everyone's pushing for it. German Academy slowing down all of the players with speedrun though. Abaddon just completely raining chaos as he falls here. But look how many people he's slowed at the same time. He slowed a lot of people, but then take a look at the health on the side of German Academy. They actually had a period there where they had five, four or five players dead all at the same time. Is this going to be enough for Speedrun to change it over, though? Because Speedrun now can move en masse and head to these carts. Whether or not it's going to be enough, I don't believe they're going to be able to slow enough of them. We do see Lava currently on the side of Speedrun. Looks like customer support is heading over there just to help secure that. German Academy currently fighting here, trying to get this cart sorted. I believe this is mid-cart here. Trying to get this sorted and making sure that this one ticks over as well. They're currently in control of two carts. They do have around about a 600-point lead, which is actually fairly substantial at the start here. But it looks as though Speedrun have turned this one. And German Academy kind of giving that one up and heading over to this lava cart. We see Iroh and Avidance here switching over customer support. Is customer support going to be able to keep this? I believe customer support is. That will tick over for Speedrun. Desperately needed on the points. And the fact that they have this other cart here as well does give Speedrun a little bit more of a play into gaining these points back. 
It was very important. Uh, it was very, very important here for 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 speedrun. Then they secured both lava and metal. If they were to lose both of them, the game w would pretty much spill over, as they can just drag the team around and, and play around numbers. However, we see the top here. I love my dog in a two v one. I expect he will lose it here to Atisha and Grillan, and Evidan is already rotating in as well. So. This top will be safe. And as we see here, very, very smart play. German Academy staying on graveyard, waiting for everyone to rest. And then they push for the new lava. They don't want to go in one by one. They don't want to get split rest. It's very important to, to try to keep your numbers. But as we see here, speedrun coming back, helping with around five members. But it seems like speedrun has the number still. One thing I've noticed the speedrun are doing very, very well, sorry to interrupt you there, Gallo, is they're actually getting kills in between the carts coming out. So German Academy are fighting on these carts, but as soon as the cart gets capped, German Academy seem to lose two or three players. We've seen Hippie sponsored Eru going down on the side of German Academy. Speedrun are keeping their players alive, and they're able to freely move around the map. We see Grill dead here currently, which is a big, big play that German Academy are now currently missing, which does mean that Speedrun are able to gain control of pretty much every single car. Meanwhile, on the side of Speedrun, they're hardly losing anybody. Even when they are losing, it's only one player at a time, and it generally is on a car that is already, I would consider lost for them so at the moment speedrun currently in control of three carts this lava is probably going to stick with them unless they do lose anybody they're looking like they're in a fairly comfortable position this cart stays with them but as i say that it has turned over to german academy german academy have turned this back over they are going to be capping lava here unless something drastic happens unless there is a big change no that has been capped by them speedrun have capped the other their other cart but then you see this one here this this cart here is a uh, uh, mid is going to end up tipping over into uh, speedrun and they're going to take the lead yeah, this is a very interesting game, because as you said, there's hardly any deaths on speedrun. The amount of the crowd control German Academy putting onto them is forcing them outside of the cart. We've got the shining forces from Hippie just knocking everyone out. We've got the roots coming in, the cyclones coming in. And speedrun, they just, even though they're not dying, even though they're not particularly losing the team fight, they're not getting these these carts when they're contesting with German Academy. But as we say that, it's, uh, I mean, it's looking fairly balanced at the moment, but at German Academy, they kind of need to try and win a team fight at some point. They can't keep relying on this crowd control because they are falling behind. Well, the team fights don't seem to like the team fights. They're actually doing a relatively good job in. They're staying alive. Sponsored, actually, as I say that, sponsored goes down here on lava. So lava is pretty much going to be lost for the time being, unless we do see a cross kill. I don't think it is going to happen. But it, it's, it almost seems to be that as soon as the as soon as the cart gets scored, whether it goes over to Jim Academy or Speedrun, it seems as though Speedrun do take the advantage and just switch thing over. We do see Drakovic here going over. They're planning to turn the top cart over to German Academy, whether or not we will actually see Speedrun do anything about that. And as I say that, German Academy actually taking control of mid and top as well. And there doesn't seem to be any Speedrun player within the vicinity. And you mentioned this, Eddie, that it can be very dangerous if you just let people float. But as I say that, Hippie's down, Thak is down, Iroh is down, that's three players down. This now gives Speedrun the opportunity to really push out hard because they're down three players. We do see Thak coming back now just as just as the uh, speedruns start to move out but this gives them great position and the ability to potentially take some of these cards yeah, and uh, honestly, very well come back from speedrun here. German Academy, we have to remember, they were up 500 points to zero. Judging for the points, that means they have only secured one and a half cards since that moment, which is quite a lot. And as speedrun takes middle here, that will give them position for the next lava. And this middle will give them 150 points. We're going to be around 300 points then. And, and, and that just means the next lava will, will be everything. I don't think uh, speedrun will go for top here. I think they're just going to sack it and then commit hard for the next lava as that will most likely spell the victory for them i don't know whether you just saw that gallo but nauri was dead nauri rezzed and the second that nauri rezzed sponsor drop so german academy have basically spent this entire game down one healer at almost every point in the engages uh, almost every point in the uh, that they've engaged with uh speedrun and speedrun have been using this to their advantage because again a, a car gets scored and then immediately you see three players die on the side of german academy and as i mentioned that sponsored came up and now hippie's dead yeah i mean this is what i was saying earlier like german academy they're just losing these fights they're just losing the players whereas speedrun they don't really seem to be dying at all. I can maybe count on one hand how many deaths they've had. And uh, Trakovic here, he's waiting to try and just ninja this car. I think they might engage, do a late engage onto Lava. Sitting in stealth here, waiting around. Maybe he's not entirely sure if he wants to open or not. Waiting, I waiting, waiting for the last moment. 
Yeah, but even if he opens at the last moment, he won't be able to turn it. This card right now will spill the first victory for Speedrun. They will now be in a in a very comfortable lead. They will only need around 20 points, as we see now, yeah. and that's basically just ticks from the card and as uh, secure both top and lava. I think German Academy is giving this game, letting Speedrun secure the victory. Yeah, what a great game between these two teams. We obviously saw German Academy taking a little bit of a lead at the start. They were able to get a couple of very, very impressive early carts. But, uh, I mean, there was one where it was absolutely clutch. It was literally as the lid was closing, it switched over to the Alliance. But Speedrun bringing it back at the end here. We do see them going one up in this... Sorry, uh, yeah, Speedrun going one up in this series against German Academy. And... Silver Shard Mines, it never ever disappoints. No, look at the damage also here from Demidar. Top damage as a DK. Not only is he slowing the enemies running from card to card, he's also managed to do a lot of damage and 10 kills. Let's just yeah, do that's what I was saying. The killing blows from speedrun. It's yeah. just so many more kills than uh, on the side of German Academy. German Academy just trying to play the... Every time they lost a player, they just try to peel off and get the next cards, but... It didn't really seem to work after the start of the game. No, and also looking at the text quickly, uh, you know, card control doesn't mean that you kept that card eventually, but but looking here at, at Refsi, 10 cards controlled, wow. I mean, he's always the first in them, and that's uh, such a, a great point and uh, such a strong mental to have, because you need to be first, right? And especially when you have a kill advantage as well, as we saw that Speedrun has, they can always keep pushing for, for the cards, right? And and use their numbers, which, I mean, that, that's how you play them, right? It's like a, a silver shot. And sorry, I'm getting in focus. I think the Gelo can, can take over. <laughs> Every time we come to something where you're on cam, you're just constantly doing this. I don't know. I preferred. I preferred the face. I preferred the face movement. Just the get face the face as have. close as possible and then move back. That seemed to work out quite well for you. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it was. Again, it was. It was a really strong start from German Academy, but Speedrun slowly but surely started to uh, slowly, to, slowly started to put the pressure on, and it really started to tell. And I mean, we saw a couple of times there was, you know, when when German Academy had everybody available, their team fight didn't look that bad. You know, there was there was actually once or twice where German Academy were actually able to turn lava during a big team fight. They, you know, they did a great job in controlling that. But the problem then started to show afterwards when they were trying to make those rotations, when they were getting caught in ones and twos, you saw players, you know, just dropping left and right, getting picked out by, you know, getting picked out by the DK, doing a great job in making sure that they could not move around the map freely, Gallo. And I think I think in the end that that really was the telling factor in this game in just how effective Speedrun were at picking off stragglers. Yeah, I mean Speedrun were excellent at that. I, I just think this next map from German Academy needs to be an objective map once again. I think they're gonna have to go for uh a Rathi Basin, maybe even Isla Storm to try and like cap bases and avoid fighting as much as they can, because their healers just seem to fall constantly to the side of speedrun. I mean, you say objective-based map, technically Battlefield Gunaeus is objective-based. Yeah, but it's a little bit more uh, like fighting a lot, whereas on <laughs> Arathi Basin, you can kind of get really carried by your Rogue and Boomkin play. Yeah, that's true. And as we know, German Academy have a very, very powerful Rogue in Avidance. We've seen just how effective they can be in these battlegrounds. Eddie, would you agree with an objective-based map, or do you want to see something slightly different? I think we're going to see an AB, honestly. I think uh, I think German Academy will opt into AB. It's also less Team Fry reliant, which is good for them. I don't think they like these big 8v8s versus speedrun. As we saw, they were struggling hard on Lava. So going for the AB means that they can thin out the, the team fight, right? And and send members off to other bases, even if they're not contested, just to, 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 to thin out uh, the enemy team as well. So yeah, something like this. But uh, yeah, AB is my prediction. That's a good prediction. I want to see predictions from chat. Obviously, German Academy did lose the game, so they do get to pick the second map. Chat, what do you want to see? Do you want to see Inarathi Basin? Do you maybe want to see a Battle for Ganeus? Maybe you want to go completely out of the blue and go Temple of Kotmogu. Just let's just go team fight all the time. Let's have it. What do you want, chat? I want to know what map you want next. And speedrun, obviously, you know, they played a very, very good Silver Shard Mines there. Um, 
is there any is there any map that you would say that speedrun are probably weak at eddie we get i mean i don't think they want a guilnias against speedrun after this domination they just had i think steve speedrun really showed that in the team fights they they hit hard or so i think i don't think we're gonna see a guilnias at least that's uh, that's for sure but but maybe if then german academy academy are to win this maybe speedrun goes for the guilnias since they had this great showing in the first game so well, yeah so I mean, yeah. that's, that's a good point. If we do go to a game three, you know, if German Academy do take this second game, then speedrun are going to be the ones that pick the third map. So there is a world where we see a Rathi Basin from German Academy. If they take the if they take a Rathi Basin, we then see the battle for Gnaeus out of speedrun. And Gelu, that could, uh, you know, that could be really rough for German Academy. Yeah, based on every other uh, Battle Gnaeus game, it's... Well, then again, we did have some ninja camps going on in our previous game of E-Heroes versus Big Burst of it. So I'm sure Avidance could maybe pull off something tricky like that, but uh, it will mainly come down to that team fight, and I just hope they're ready for it. Yeah, that's that's the main thing. And you know, we, we speak. It's, it's interesting that we speak about team fights. We speak about objective map, uh, objective based maps there, Gallo. And you know, you've mentioned before that you do prefer to play those objectives. Um, and speak. <laughs> speaking of objectives, it is an objective based map. It's Gilneas. Oh, what? Yeah. German oh. Academy have picked Gilneas as their uh, as their second map. So uh, again, it is that objective based map. But as you mentioned, Gallo, it's it's a much more team fight focused map here between the two. Is is it? Does that indicate to you that we could see some potentially ninja caps here from Avidan? Are they thinking of trying something like that against Germ against Speedrun? Sorry, or do you feel as though German heroes are backing themselves in the team fight? department i mean maybe i've seen you can play this map i've seen teams do this where they instead of sending everyone to waterworks they kind of stall and send some people to the uh opposite starting base where it be mines or lighthouse and they try and split it up into like two team fights either side so they might try and go for that if they think their uh overall team fight is weaker hmm? so it'd be cool yeah. to see that i know avidance likes to play his kind of weird match comps like that and i think, where, I think uh, it throws other teams off guard so I think you've hinted at it before, Eddie, as well, in that Avidance is, is, is very much the shot caller uh, ah. for German Academy. And if, again, it, it could be, it says, and Gelo, you know, touched upon it there, obviously splitting the team the team up and having two separate team fights and being able to move. If they commit too hard one area, you just switch and you maintain control of kind of two bases at pretty much every single point of the map. If Avidance feels as though his team is, is better suited for that, and if he feels as though he can control his team better than speedrun, it, it's definitely a good play for them. Yeah, it is, and I think I think they just have a lot of confidence. I, I assume he's going to go outlaw as well as we saw yesterday. Great success he had on that pick, and I also assume that speedrun is not going to opt into a rogue like Gelo usually likes, uh, so they have other chances than just the team fight. But yeah, I, and, and looking down here as well, look at this great point of view. We can even see the birds flying around here on this Sunday. Really, really nice. And uh, the cinematics are actually great here, except the ships, as you mentioned yesterday. Cakes, they probably need an update. But uh, but yeah, I mean, Outlaw Rogue? Sure, bring it, Evidence. Yeah, it is entirely possible. We do see Battle for Gnaeus here. Speedrun versus German Academy. Speedrun are 1-0 up. Uh, we will get that fixed at the top of the screen. They're currently showing 0-0. Zero, zero. It is 1-0 to Speedrun in this best of three. If they do win this, they will go on to face E-Heroes in the upper bracket semi-final. German Academy will drop down into the loser's bracket. Just taking a quick look at the various different compositions that we see here. We do see the two Boomkins coming out of both of these teams. We do have the Rep Holly on the side of Speedrun, and we have Avidance, obviously, that rogue on German Academy. And looking at the two healers, once again, we've got a double disc set up on the side of Speedrun with the Resto Druid versus the Paladin Monk Disc Priest on the side of German Academy. Gallo, taking a look at these two compositions, anything that specifically strikes you as uh, giving favor to one team or the other? Uh, not so much giving Fey, but I just noticed that Avidar... Oh, okay, no, he swaps now. He was playing Night Fey a second ago, but now he's gone <laughs> to Necro. <laughs> I thought that was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, it looks like Speedrun opting into that teamfight composition as we were talking about, the Warrior DK Rep Paladin with the yeah. Boomkins, one Kyrian, one uh, Necrolord. They're getting all amped up by this Necrolord banner from the Warrior, so they're going to do absolute huge damage when they go into the fight. 
whereas German Academy playing that more setup team fight comp, where they have the Kyrian Warrior, the Fear Dragon combination that teams so much like to do recently. Yeah, and the, the biggest difference, honestly, is uh, healers. We see uh, Versa Druid and Double Disc, and then we see the traditional Palamon Disc, and then, of course, the Red Paladin coming out for Chow Man here instead of the Rogue. So, pretty equal lineups, uh, at least looking at the, the classes, but here in the opener, it looks like German Academy are taking a lot of damage. We have seen all the, the cooldowns used for the Warrior now, except the Shout now, and. And I, I would argue that that's not a god situation for, for a warrior. You wanna maybe hold your retaliation if you can, but then again, Soplek has also used all his cooldowns, so it seems like the warrior is in focus here. Yeah, Thak taking a bunch of damage at the start here. But take a look at the defensive cooldowns available. We do see one Pain Suppression on the side of Speedrun. The Pain Suppression just came out from Hippie on German Academy there. Thak still taking a bunch of damage. The Rallying Cry has been used. Die by the Sword isn't available for the next 25 seconds. Still a lot of pressure coming through. We haven't seen a single death on either team yet. They're really battling it hard. But Thak is so, so close to being taken down by Speedrun. He does leap out. It looks as though he is able to survive that one. Switching over to Cruise are now doing as much damage as possible. Die by the sword coming up in 10 seconds. So Thak is going to have a major defensive cooldown available. That is 20 seconds on the side of Sublex. But once again, take a look at the defensive cooldowns that are available. Both pain suppressions have been used for speedrun, whereas German Academy have a couple left available. Not many, but they do still have that ability to keep everybody alive. This is pretty much neck and neck, Galu. Yeah, that was a really good play here from uh, Thak. I mean, uh, from Sublex, that was intentional. He just wall bannered the blind on his healer as Avidance was just trying to completely CC Ace out of the game there and try and get some huge damage onto their team. It, it look, This looks very unfun to be a melee in this competition. Sublex just getting tunneled all game. Thak just getting tunneled all game. Neither player can actually commit and go in and perform their role. Ace now into the kidney shot, but Thak is the one that goes down instead. German Academy losing one player sponsored by the low. By, uh, by the way, looking kind of low as well. Put into that Cyclone on their big heal. Might have the bubble soon. Nari into the root being the triple fear of the sponsor, by the way. And it looks like their healers are under so much pressure on German Academy. Yeah, yeah and we, uh, if, if I was German Academy right now, maybe I would already choose to reset the fight. Don't don't use your bubble from the Paladin. You have Beck coming in though, but Evidence was also dead. So if sponsored bubble now, I mean, she doesn't have it for the next fight and it looks rough, right? Like if you, and, and now the Warlock also die, right? They, they lose so much DPS that I don't think it's worth to keep fighting. Yeah, they've lost, obviously, Avidance and Eru there. And the yeah. problem you end up having is that as soon as one player dies, it just means that you put more pressure and all three of their healers have dropped. Sponsored Nauri and Hippie all going down at the same time. Oh, Alino, really? though, Alino is potentially going. And have they left that alone? Yeah, they sent the Guardian in to spin. Mooming is coming in to spin the base, but Ulahinyu reads him like a book. However, the Warlock spawns just in time. But, oh, and he has Trinket as well. Ah. Oh. A great read from Ula Hindu, but but sadly he was just, I mean, a few seconds too slow, honestly. Yeah, he was just too slow to get there. But I also want to point out, German Academy haven't taken, uh, sorry, uh, Speedrun have yet to actually take Waterworks currently. Trakovic and Iro are going to be up in the next sort of like five seconds. So German Academy are going to be back to full complement. And there we go. That is yes. now going to be taken. But Avidance coming in and just making an absolute nuisance uh. of himself. The problem you've now got though is that if Avidance gets caught, I mean, yeah, Fak coming in as well, there's the fear as well. But if Avidance gets caught here and dies, then once again, you end up a play down you don't have a full complement. It looks as though German Academy are doing their best. Mooming has died, actually. Mooming has died here, so that potentially could open up Lighthouse on the side of German Academy. We'll have to wait and see. Well, I know probably looking at that, it looks like they will have somebody defending, but in come the rest of German Academy. And once again, doing what they can to potentially take this, it hasn't been claimed by either team. So once again, the points looking relatively similar. There's only about a point, uh, two points in it per tick. So this is incredibly close. We're going to see who's going to get the first kill in this team fight, because once again, that first kill gallo in the team fight is huge for either team. Yeah. That was really excellent play from Avedon's there. I don't know how he knew that he was going to hold it there. One man against nine, it looked like. But he just managed to hold on with his evasion and his Cloak of Shadows to not die there. And they're able to go offensive now. They look like they're doing okay in this team fight. They don't have the barrier from Ace. There's no pain suppression available. The kidney shot goes on to Ace. But Iro is the one that falls, unfortunately. It seems like Speedrun like to go on the heat on the uh, DPS quite a lot, whereas... 
German Academy keep trying to force these goes onto the healers. Yeah, and I think also, uh, just to recap quickly how Evidence held it, that was traditional German Academy gameplay. This, uh, that spin they did there is what they were known for when they played double broke. Imagine you had another broke after Evidence coming in, right? And, and the, the idea is, how does he spin it against nine? As soon as the Garden is done, he waits the, the three, four seconds till the, guy, the cap is nearly done, and then he opens with Duel. He opens with Duel, and he just spins with Fan of Knives. As he's in Duel, he can still spin the flag, and he usually duels a healer, so the healer can't even kill him. And then when he gets out of Duel, he has his Cloak, he has his Evasion, so he can actually hold the base for around 15 to 20 seconds. And, and that allowed his whole team to come in again, and, and that's what we want to see when you want to regroup. Have your three healers coming together, and, and that's what they did. I mean, he doesn't even I mean, have Duel, he's outlaw. He's <laughs> outlaw, he doesn't even have Duel, no, that's true, he doesn't know. Oh, that's how good Avidance is, that is how good, good is. Avidance is. I mean, take a look, we do see Thak going down here. Once again, those melee characters getting trained by Speedrun and dropping. Iro looking really low, Avidance is currently surviving, but I do want to point out the mana on the side of Speedrun. Harley is completely tapped, running on fumes. Ace is not far behind. Hippie, Nauri, and Sponsored on German Academy actually looking relatively healthy. The only problem is, is yes, you have the mana, but can you heal through the sheer amount of damage coming out from Speedrun? Speedrun still haven't lost a player at the same time. They still haven't turned Waterworks either. So that does mean that we have Waterworks, but Harley now is able to get a little bit of a drink. That does leave Ace by himself. Ace is currently tapped completely tapped on mana. Lara currently is looking rough as well. Decadine does go down on the side of speedrun here. Sublex also looking pretty rough. Harley is coming back in now with a little bit of mana. That is going to help out. Hippie starting to look low mana on the side of uh, on the side of German Academy. Once again, this team fight has not stopped here on Waterworks. Neither team has taken it. So this is still all to play for, especially when you consider just how many points are in it. There is only two points in it. Speedrun with a slight lead. And if they continue battling here, it could come down to somebody ninjuring either Lighthouse or Mind. Kill on Dean was super important. It allowed German Academy to, to stabilize the healing. When he was dead, they didn't even drop under 70%. That just tells the story of how important the Warlock is. Warlock not only bringing a lot of damage, but also spell protection from the boomers. You simply can't spam the spell with the UAs being stacked up as well. You usually go for two UAs on a heal on healers and then one UA on your kill target and you just oh. spam damage. But then Thack falls and German Academy is ooh. Yeah. So Thack falls, yeah, Thack falls simply because German Academy had absolutely no mana to speak of. There was no mana at the inn. There was absolutely nothing for them to do. They're still going to be fighting it here. But the problem is, is that there is, it's only a matter of time until more players die on the side of German Academy because there is, there are no heals coming out. If there are heals coming out, it is the slightest dribble of a heal because there is zero mana. But Moomin moving over to Alino here, trying to potentially get an ink. Is it going to work out for them? I I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, he's trying to call the bluff yes, of a yes, line. He, he knows that he's yes. going to go track his cap as base. Oh, to, ah, he should have waited. Ulahini was just about to go. Oh, and now they and now they can't spin Waterworks either. Oh. Yeah, that was a really good play from uh, side of German Academy, but he just went a little bit too early. He knew that he went to his base previously, so he knew he was going to go again. So he wanted to go try and cap it while he was en route, but uh, unfortunately he opened a little bit too early and was caught out. Big turning point in that last fight for speedrun was Leralol got a huge drink in the middle of it, and that just allowed them to stay up for quite a long time. Unfortunately, he just managed to get in stealth, ran behind the water side and just drank to about 60% mana and just followed the team through on that. Yeah, that was absolutely huge. I mean, as mentioned, just how important Healer Mana is in these team fights. We do see German Academy grouping back up once again, heading towards Waterworks. And they've been relatively even in these team fights. We did obviously see pretty much a full team wipe there on the side of German Academy. But this this game is, is not over by a long shot. There are still a lot of opportunities for German Academy to come back into it. Eddie, would you say that, you know, possibly one more shot of the team fight here, and if this doesn't work out, maybe try and go for something slightly different. Try and change things up. Yeah, they definitely have time for one more team fight. They have around five to six minutes before we get into the danger zone of them needing to be bases. So I think it's fine. Take, take a re team fight here. They did manage to, to hold the other team fight stall out for around seven minutes. So I feel like it, it, it just comes down to set up, honestly, if they get a few better setups. And as I say this, look at Evidence dropping low, no cloak, no vanish. Even his, his last wall is running off. I mean, it, 
what well, what else do they have in the tank really they can't they can't just keep taking damage they need to do something different i think yeah pain suppression down on the side of hippie and they do have pain suppression up on ace which is a massive massive defensive cooldown thak doesn't have die by the sword available mind you neither does sublex so once again taking a look at these at these team fights and they're pretty much using everything and it does come down to the top couple uh, you know the top couple of uh, players here that like like i said the healers they are probably what is most important back taking so much damage and that is able to stay alive leaping out doing what they can very very impressive abadance also now the pressure switched over onto but decadine is dead on the side of speedrun is this the opportunity that german academy needs to potentially break through the team fight here at waterworks and take the second base yeah, maybe. I mean, speedrun, they're just tunneling the DPS here, trying to alleviate as much pressure as possible. You see a lot of Cyclones going out as well, just preventing the side of German Academy to really do anything. Full clone onto Sponsored now as they try and get some pressure onto Nari. He has no Trinket, he has no Cocoon. He could easily drop in the next CC chain at all. The Fears come out, the Fac once again getting tunneled. So he just cannot do any pressure onto the healers at all. His retail is popped. Now they just swap onto Ira. They're just swapping between DPS constantly. Just so they just can't do anything. Root beam on both healers for the side of German Academy. Trying to get anything they can, but it doesn't seem to achieve much. As a side of speedrun now, the healers, both pain suppressions have been used. The Tree of Life coming out from Leralol. But it looks like there might be a bit of a problem next time they do this huge beam grip. Here it is. The spear, the dragon comes down. There's going to be a lot of damage going out. Erin Alley falls. Back dropping very low. It, I think Joan Academy might have to pull out of this fight soon. Yeah, it does feel that way. It hasn't quite gone the way that they wanted. They did get the kill onto Decadine, but it didn't mean anything. And then the switch over to Eru, taking down Eru Nali on the side of German Academy is dead, but he now comes back. However, Ace taking a bunch of damage. Ace is able to survive through this. And German Academy are having some fantastic setups. They've got, they've obviously got the grip. They've got that Frost DK with the breath coming out, but it doesn't mean much. They're not gaining anything from it. And as time ticks on, this is slowly but surely running short for German Academy. If they don't take the fight here, soon if they don't get those kills i mean back is now down back is down on the side of german academy that puts even more pressure and once again they are completely tapped to mana hippie here trying to get a drink sublex is down on the side of speedrun though harley is low on harley has no mana left neither does ace Hippie needs to get this drink and get out quickly because if Hippie can do that it is going to give a lot more uh, a lot more healing onto the side of german academy it looks as though hippie is now out they have a little bit of mana on the field they are completely tapped on the side of speedrun if german academy are going to win this map if they are going Going to win this team fight this is the time to do it well, we see the ink here evidence going honestly i think he gave up i think he, yeah it looks like he's ff to be honest yeah. <laughs> he gave up i mean it, it is hard as well they they need a second base literally I mean, like the, right now. they're winning the team fight that while he does this but uh yeah they do need three do they not yeah i mean they need the cap literally now if yeah. they want to turn it before 1200 at least uh, is the rule of thumb but again, looking here, what, what do you think? Do you think Gilneas was, was the right choice? I Honestly, if you ask me player for player, I would say that Speedrun has better team fight players, especially with the forthcoming of, of some of the NA players. And here I think about I Love My Dog, Chowman and, and Dean, and especially Dean. Warwick is regarded as the best Warlock in Europe, but Dean, Dean, he's contesting him and he is probably the best in America at least and on many tier lists he was regarded as the same tier as Warwick, especially due to his ability with the knocks and, and the rifts. So I'm not sure if this was the correct move of German Academy. I would have preferred personally an A B, but I mean they they know their playbook, right? They know what they're comfortable on. So if this was the map they fell for, I mean so be it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like they were getting crushed in the team fight. It was pretty no. back and forth. No one caps the base for a very long time, so they could have gone either way. And uh, I mean, if they got lucky, if uh, Mooming didn't open so early in that unfortunate time, you could have maybe even got Lighthouse there. So it's or maybe Actually, got mine. Sorry. Yeah, I think actually that was very important. I mean, but again, it's a gamer, right? How long do you wait before you start capping? <laughs> I, I would argue that he should have waited a bit more. He should have waited till his last member died, because as soon as his last member dies at Waterworks, then the enemy will think, okay, the Guardian is coming, right? So he should have played around the mind games of, I mean, he, he's not going to spin when there's three people alive, right? He's going to wait till the very last moment. So 
I think that was the plan, and you saw Ulahinio as well. He was moving towards Lighthouse, but always kept an eye back on Mines. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a gamble, but it didn't pay off this time. Yeah, it didn't quite work out for German Academy. I mean, take a look here. We're going to see all of the stats from the... Uh, I mean, look at that Shaoman with 15. 15 killing blows. 15 killing blows on the side of that Retribution Paladin. That is absolutely disgusting. 4.7 million damage coming out there. And, I mean, obviously that, you know... There's potential that it could be slightly skewed there simply because of, you know, we did see pretty much the team wipe on the side of German Academy uh, speedrun potentially taking those kills there. Shawan could have killed them, but uh, still that 4.7 million damage. And not only that, but a lot of healing done at the same time. Look at the damage. Wow. And look at the kills. I mean... Honestly, I mean, of course, Chowman is top damage. He he was pretty untouched. It seemed like the Warriors was in focus for both teams. And when uh, German Academy is dying, right, and Chowman is just doing free DPS, of course, his numbers are going to be screwed a bit. But 15 kills, wow. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I would say that's just a great performance by him. You don't get 15 kills randomly, I, will, I must say. I mean, take a look here. You look at the actual kill killing blows. Avidance, Iro, and Eru. They got four killing blows. There are two players on the side of speedrun that got more killing blows than the entirety of German Academy got. Like that's that's all that need, like that just shows you just how many extra kills speedrun were getting. And I mean, there was a couple of moments where German Academy were able to get a kill here. They were able to get a kill oh. there, and it just didn't work out for them. Um, Eddie seems to have turned his light off. I'm what? sure we'll get back to him um, as soon as possible. But uh, Gallo, take a look at sort of like the, how that team fight went there. What do you think the reason is that Speedrun were able to take the advantage in those in those situations at Waterworks? Uh, well, they kept getting a lot of drinks off uncontested. Every time there was a drink happening, no one really capitalized on it, unfortunately. They, they, they were consistently going oom first from what it looks like. They're, both their priests kept having to drink a lot and a lot. Even their druid got ones off, but they were never able to catalyze and maybe get a kill when they were one healer out of the fight or be able to stop the drinks for that matter. Yeah, very true, very true. And I'm sure I'm sure we will get Eddie back shortly. Yes. Um, we, we will get Eddie back shortly. Don't worry, folks. Uh, so that does mean that German Academy do drop down to the lower bracket and Speedrun do move on in the upper bracket. Speedrun will go on to face E-Heroes in the upper bracket semi-final and German Academy go down to face Known Unknown. Looks as though we are setting up for an incredible lower bracket. I mean, a lot of those teams there, we saw them in action yesterday, uh, and they were pulling out some incredible stuff. They may have dropped down to the lower bracket, but that doesn't mean anything. Ghosting Farm did an incredible job against German heroes, uh, um, you know, personally. So I'm excited to see what they do here against Big Burstovic, and that is going to be the next game that we have. We will have Ghosting Farm against Big Burstovic. Make sure you don't go anywhere. We will have more after this break. And Eddie's back with us afterwards as well. So make sure you don't miss out on anything. <laughs> 